If you've ever used OpenPilot and you thought, man, this thing drives really naturally, that's not a coincidence. Behind the wheel is a powerful AI model trained on millions of miles of real driving data. Let's dig into how it works, what makes it so different, and how Kama's ML Sim has the potential to change the way AI learns to drive. Hello, and thank you for joining me on this beautiful Saturday afternoon for a nice little drive here in North Texas. If you're a current OpenPilot user or even just started looking into it, you may have heard people talk about driving models. Uh, well, what is a driving model? Basically, a driving model is the brains of OpenPilot. It takes the visual information from the Comma 3X's cameras and translates that into driving actions, so steering, uh, braking, acceleration, but it's not a model that relies on like pre-programmed if-then actions. It's actually a deep learning model which can predict situations on the road and make determinations on what the safest next move will be, uh, pretty much like a normal human driver would. And that's really why OpenPilot can handle things like curves, lane merges, cut-ins, uh, stop-and-go traffic, with a really natural feel. So these models are trained with uh, what's called supervised learning. And basically, in OpenPilot, users have the ability through what's called firehose mode to contribute their uh, driving data to the learning set. And that driving data includes both the visual data from the cameras, as well as the actual driving data of what the driver did in terms of steering, acceleration, and braking. The neural network then kind of learns to associate what it sees in that driving data with what a safe human driver would do. The problem with that kind of training is that it really only sees what safe driving is. If the model makes a mistake during inference, because it's only seen safe driving, it doesn't necessarily know how to recover from that bad situation. For example, drifting out of the center of the lane. And this is where simulation comes in, because if you want to train a driving model how to properly react to these kind of bad situations, like drifting out of the center of a lane, you need to expose it to those kinds of bad situations. And that's exactly where Kama's new simulator comes in. So you might be thinking, like, why not, why don't we just use like a video game engine like Grand Theft Auto to uh, train these driving models? That's actually not a bad idea for testing, but for training, uh, it comes with a lot of issues. When you're building those kind of handcrafted testing sets, training sets within a game system, you could spend forever building out all the different edge cases and you'd still fall short. Now, Kama's previous solution to this was something called the Small Offset Simulator, which was a simulator which could handle small changes like slight drifting within a lane, but it couldn't scale to more complex situations and could introduce artifacts that the uh, model could cheat off of. So the solution was actually building a new simulator that was powered by machine learning. So Kama's new ML Sim, which stands for Machine Learning Simulation, is a fully learned simulator. Instead of using a um, game engine like Grand Theft Auto, it uses machine learning and it can generate entire driving scenes using just AI. And it works in three steps. The first step is the image tokenizer, which compresses each frame into a discrete visual token. The second step is the pose tokenizer, which encodes motion, basically your speed, your yaw, your pitch, etc. The third stage is the dynamics transformer, which is kind of like, you know, chat GPT, but for driving. It determines what comes next, the next steps, frame by frame and token by token. What's cool about that is you can feed it a few seconds of actual footage, and then from there, it can generate realistic rollouts from stopping at a stoplight, lane changes, lane merges, oncoming traffic, highway traffic. And because it's fully learned from actual driving data, it's fully grounded in reality and doesn't rely on any pre-programmed logic. And one of the things that sets OpenPilot apart from other ADAS systems is that you have the ability uh, in some forks to choose which driving model you want to use. And these driving models are released you know, every few months. So why would you want to do that? Well, as it stands right now, 
specific driving models behave slightly differently uh, from one another. So some may be a little bit more aggressive with acceleration or lane changes. Others may be a little bit laid back. And with the ability to choose which driving model you're using, you can choose a driving model that fits your driving style. The problem with that is that there's not a lot of documentation out there on what the differences between driving models actually is. And when the driving models have names like filet of fish or down to ride, vegan filet of fish, vegetarian filet of fish, Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider 7, Tomb Raider 10, it doesn't actually give you a lot of information about what those driving models do and what the differences between them are. Luckily, there are a lot of resources online on Discord that do talk about the different driving models, what the benefits of them are. A lot of it, unfortunately, seems to be subjective. Some people will swear by Tomb Raider 7. Other people say they experience only bad behavior with uh, Tomb Raider 7. So it really is kind of like a year mileage may vary thing. But what is nice about Open Pilot is that it does give you the ability to choose those driving models and experiment, see which one works best for you. So why does this all matter? Well, the cool thing about ML Sim is that it can train these driving models not only on what has happened, but on what could happen. It can generate failure scenarios, bad lighting, shadows, strange driver behavior, and teach that driving model through AI how to handle those situations. Ultimately, that means faster iteration, bigger, safer models, and a more confident driving experience with or without your hands on the wheel. If you want to learn more about how ML Sim works, I really recommend the Comic-Con 2023 talk by Yassine. I've linked that down in the description below. Take a look. There's a lot of interesting information down there. I'm also going to be giving away a Honcho Rivian wireless charger. The giveaway will run through the end of July, and I'll give it away on a live stream on July 31st. If you've enjoyed this video and it's helped you understand OpenPilot a little bit better, please give it a like and subscribe. It helps the channel. If there's anything else you want to learn about OpenPilot that you'd like me to cover, let me know down in the comments below, or even if you have experience with OpenPilot and you want to let us know how that's been going, I'd really appreciate it. That comment will get you an entry into the giveaway for the Honcho wireless charger, one entry per person. So multiple comments will not get you more chances, but feel free to comment more and join in the discussion. And again, thank you for joining me. It's been a pleasure having you. Thanks for watching and enjoy the drive.